and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be finishing off our EV scene, so let's jump into it. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a couple of different things. We're going to go over how to add in multiple cameras to your scene. So how do you actually put in cuts between cameras in a scene. This works in Eevee and in Cycles both. It's a really great tip for uh, just creating some really cool edits within Blender when you're just working straight out of a render. It's really, really nice. And then after we do that, we're going to add in um, our really cool surprise ending with the door opening up and we're going to put the Mandalorian standing right outside the door, uh, get that all set up and working. We're going to be talking about shape keys and how to use shape keys in animation. And then we're going to also talk a bit about the render settings that we need to get this out of Eevee. So, that should cover us for this episode. I hope you're excited. Let's get started by talking about the cameras. All right, now we've got our we've got our animated elements now set up. We've got our bones all working. Everything's happening. It's looking great. Last thing we really want to have is some kind of camera animation. So I'm going to jump into that camera we had before, and um, I'll switch back to my solid shade mode. And uh, we just need to think about what's a what's a dramatic way to uh, really highlight this scene, bring it bring it to life. So. I'll just turn all that back off and um, actually I'll just switch back to our timeline editor just to simplify our view and I can go back to the first frame now. All right, I'll just start up high like this and I'm going to set two keyframes. I think this will look good. Um, we'll come forward to about frame 50 when it starts to do its thing there and we'll just drop down low. I'll keep us zeroed out on the Y as well. So do that. See, zero us out here as well for the Y. So we're just kind of coming straight down. Yep, I can bring this out a bit more. Cool. Now we also want to make sure this thing uh, isn't on screen until we need it. So I'll go down to my um, hit the full stop key to open up the hierarchy. Remember, it all lives inside the uh, the rig itself. So if you're trying to find your geometry, that's where it's it's parented underneath the, the rig itself. So, um, And we just need to animate the visibility of it. So I want to make sure it doesn't appear until right about there. It's actually in the table. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a keyframe for the render and the visibility. If you can't see these, by the way, um, you can go up here to restriction toggles and just turn these on. And that just makes them visible. So you've got them as an option. And I'll go back one frame and I'll turn them both off. Here we go. And now we can see that it's not in the scene. All right, cool. So we're going to come down. That thing's going to zoom in. And when it does that, I'm going to use this as a point to cut in. So I'm going to grab my camera and uh, I'm going to just hit Shift D to duplicate. And we've got a new camera. I'm going to clear the keyframes from off of this new camera. Oops. Clear keyframes, there you go. And then in my uh, timeline here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna create a marker. So I'm gonna hit the M key um, and I'm gonna grab this first one just by using G to grab and bring it to the beginning of my scene. And I'm gonna select this first camera and then I'm going to go marker and bind camera to marker. So there we go, it says camera now, it matches the name. Now I'm gonna go to my next point. So right about when that happens, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit M and then I'm going to go marker and bind camera to markers. Now you can see camera 001 is the camera that's here. This is a great way to just kind of insert edits into your scene. So we might increase our focal length for this second camera and then like zoom in a bit, get a different angle to show kind of what's going on here. And uh, I'll just set a location and rotation keyframe. So as this thing's coming in, Maybe what we can do is rotate around and I don't know, move in with it like that. That's kind of cool. Might even grab it out like that. So you can see now we are in the first camera for the first shot and then we cut in. And now we can adjust that edit point by just grabbing this camera. So we might go so we can cut right on that action of the thing zooming and the pulse getting closer and closer and then let's figure out when does, when does everything turn off uh, it's right about here so it'd be fun to have the camera 
just kind of keep moving until this point. Okay, so I finally decided on how I was going to land it. So I just thought this felt a little bit better just to cut into this close up. I've also dropped the camera down a bit for this shot. So we've got more of these buttons in frame. Uh, and I've moved the final keyframe right to the end of my scene, which is frame 350, so that it, it's moving the whole time. And just as all the light shut off, then it finally resolves. The camera stops. And that creates a real sense of anticipation that something's about to happen. So and don't forget to uh, make sure we just need to go to our, um, let's see, our hollow table objects. Um, and we just need to make them invisible for uh, the initial bit of our scene. So I just want to go to the first keyframe where they turn on and make sure I've got the right yeah, hologram V2. There it is. I'm going to just set this thing to be on. Um, so I'll hit a keyframe here for the camera and the monitor icon. Same for the, um, the hollow room. There we go. And then I'll just go back one frame and then I will turn these off. And that's just gonna get rid of that black shadow that was just kind of hovering there in the scene. Um, and we can go to the end here as well and do the same thing. So just go ahead and set a keyframe. All right, so now it's time to do the fun, super cool door open reveal of uh, our bounty hunter. So let's do it. I'm gonna take my camera, lock and lock camera to view, and I'll just put this over here, ba, 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 get all set up. All right, so uh, welcome to our door. Now, all right, so my door might look a little bit different from yours. Um, all I pretty much did was just, I brought out these front vertices a little bit and then just extruded everything back. I merged them all together into one object. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, um, all you can do is, Select, because I changed my mind on how I wanted to animate it. That's the basic reason. Um, but you can select all your door blades and just join them together um, by doing F3 and type in join, and then that'll join them all together. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is have this door open up. We're gonna use something called a shape key to do it. Um, it's the easiest way to animate vertices and stuff in um, in Blender without you know having to create some kind of complicated rig. Because if we wanted to like have all these blades like kind of shrink and pull back and rotate, we'd have to have like a bone for every single door blade and it would just it just get really complicated and take forever when we don't really need to do that all right so blend shapes are usually used for things like faces so if you're creating uh facial expressions on a face model you'd create a bunch of different blend shapes for all the different face expressions but you can literally use them for anything um technically you could even use them to like move a cube around the room because literally all it is is it's uh saving animation data on a per vertex level okay so let's uh let's take a look at what that means Right here underneath the, in the green tab, we've got our object data properties. We've got shape keys. Now, default is nothing. You've got nothing on there. Um, first thing to do with, with shape keys, whenever you're gonna add a shape key to a system, is to uh, click on the object and just hit the plus symbol. And this will give you the basis shape, which basically means what's your standard position? Like what's the standard position for all the vertices? What's your basic shape um, without any edits to it, right? And that's what this one is, okay? So this, whatever any editing we do in edit mode when basis is selected is gonna edit the object itself and to say, look, this is the this is the base object that I wanna base all my shape keys off of. So typically you wanna model your object, get it done, you're happy with it, then you create your basis key. And then we come into here and we click a, another plus. Now we have our first key. And we get a couple of new uh, values here, different options, right? And we can name this, we're gonna call this door open. What we can do now is with this one selected, we can then go into edit mode and uh, I'll just, let's just select, I'm gonna go into transparent mode. I'm gonna select all, actually not all of them because the way I've got mine set up, I actually think I need to select the center ones first. But if you just have one set of center vertices, then you could just select those. And um, okay, so I'm scaling from the wrong point. So so set your uh, set it to medium point. Make sure you only have those vertices selected. If I had this one up here selected, so it was kind of skewing everything off. So um, if you have it on any of these other ones, you're gonna get a different kind of result, but uh, with median point. Um, I'm gonna just scale these. Yeah, there we go. I just needed to scale them back this way a little bit. Um, and now I'm gonna select all of my center ones. And what I'm gonna do is just scale this thing up, okay, until we are open. Now, I know this is a bit crazy and all these vertexes are kind of intersecting geometry, but that's all right. Now I'm gonna grab them on the X and just move them back so that they are really just within the door shape, okay? And I might leave a little bit visible because that's that's kind of cool. Uh, 
Yeah, cool. I'll just switch back to transparent mode. I could technically um, like box select out all these guys and then scale these guys in. Um, might be a little bit better. Let's see what that looks like out of transparent mode, pull them back on the X. Yeah, that's kind of cool. We kind of retain the, the iris shape of the door if we do it this way. Yeah, I might do it like that. All right, cool. Sweet. All right, so now if I exit edit mode, you'll see all of that work disappears, right? You might go, oh, no, what happened? We just did all that work, and now it's gone. But don't worry about it. It just always resets back to the basis. And now door open has a value of zero right here. So that means that what we've done in door open, the vertex changes that we've made here, we don't want to apply them at all. We've got them set to zero. But if I slide this up, you'll see what it does is it actually slowly adds them in. So we now have a door open. So it's pretty cool. It's a great... Great little uh, trick. Um, you can use vertex groups to circle, um, you know, focus in on them. You can make it relative to different shape keys if you don't want to use basis. Um, it, there's a lot you can do with these. Anyways, so we have our animation. Now we just need to figure out the timing of it. So let's jump into our camera and uh, I'm going to get rid of that shader graph and let's just think about what we want this thing to happen. So if we turn on our rendering, it's like beeping, beam, 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 beam. Everything shuts off. Where's it shut off? Shuts off here. Yeah, I think right as it's shutting off, I think it's going to look pretty, pretty good. So maybe like frame 30, 31, somewhere around here. Let's set our first key for a door open. And then I'm going to go forward. Not many, because you know in Star Wars they they open fast these doors. They're really fast. So I did another keyframe there. So we'll go back, just have a look at that. Yeah, I think that timing is going to work out nice. All right, cool. Now all we need to do is put something bright out here so that it's obvious that it's not you know this blank void. So we're going to do that with a plane. So just create a new plane, and rotate on the X ninety, rotate on the Z ninety. There we go. Grab it on the X and we're going to drag it just out of the door like this. So it's, I don't want it intersecting any geometry, um, but we just want it outside. We'll switch back to solid mode and just grab it right out here, scale it up. Back in our camera, make sure the yeah, it's totally covered. Now I'm just going to create a new shader for this. We'll call this outside. And I'm going to go down to emission, make it pure white. There we go. Now, if I switch to rendered mode, you'll see we've got this nice bright outdoors, but it's blocked when our door shuts. So we get the nice. Oh, it looks good. Oh, it looks really good. All right, cool. Now let's get the Mandalorian in there. Now I found a cool image of him online. Um, so I brought him into Photoshop. There we are. You can use GIMP as well uh, if you know how to use GIMP. I've never actually used GIMP, but I hear it's great. It's like you know the blender for Photoshop. Anyway, so uh, here's this image I found online, downloaded it, it's pretty good resolution. It doesn't have to be too high res to pull this off, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, make this uh, its own layer and I'm gonna grab the handy dandy quick selection tool and just get some quick selection action happening on Mando. Pretty good. All right, great. Now I'm gonna go up to layer new uh, via copy. I can turn off the background. I'm gonna get rid of his cape because um, yeah, it's not going to be, we're not going to do uh, cloth dynamics in this tutorial because, um, yeah, I can't be bothered. There we go. Delete. There you go. Never, you'll never know the difference, right? I'll just position him in the middle. I'll transform and just scale him up a little bit. Sorry, this isn't like a Photoshop tutorial, but okay, so now we got Mando looking good. All right, so now what we can do is we can uh, just export this as a PNG with an alpha channel. And uh, let's just go over to export as, just make sure I've got transparency set. So however you save this thing out, just make sure you have a, you've got transparency in your background. Um, so it's pretty good, 2K texture, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, now back in Blender, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a new add-on. This is a really great add-on. It's the first time I've actually used an add-on in one of these tutorials. I try to avoid using add-ons because I feel like as a beginner or someone coming into it, it's not nice watching a tutorial where like they use a thousand add-ons and you're like, well, how, where did you get all these and how do I download them? 
this one I think is all right because it's included in Blender and everyone's got it and you just have to turn it on. So anyways, if you go into preferences and go to add-ons, um, you just want to type in the search for uh, image and there it is, import, export image images as planes. Okay, so just turn that on. All you gotta do is tick that box. That's it, and now it's active, okay? And now what we can do is we can go up to file, import images as planes. Okay, so now you do is click that and navigate to where you've exported your Mandalorian uh, image with the alpha and uh, you just click import. You don't have to change any settings. All right, so I've imported mine and uh, he's, uh, where is he? Um, there it is. You can see it gives it the name there. Um, and I think it's really small, which is why I wasn't seeing it yet. So just scale it up. Jump back into my camera view and uh, what I can do is go ahead and switch to rendered. And you can see there he is upside down, looking great. We should just stop there. Just stop the tutorial right there. Cause I mean, look at that. Uh, yeah, probably not. There we go. Looking good. All right, I'm gonna rotate on the Z a little bit. I wanna orient him so he's facing the camera as a flat plane, because I don't want to kind of give away that he's just a, you know, just a flat plane. How many of you thought that there was a full Mandalorian model sitting on the side of that door that I was gonna show you to make? Anybody disappointed right now that it's just a still? I hope not. Okay, uh, so now next step, uh, we'll go to the material and uh, just open up my shader editor. Where are you? There you are. And you can see there it's brought in our Mandalorian image. Um, I'm gonna take the color and I'm gonna pipe it into the emission. So we're actually emitting now into the scene with uh, Mandalorian and that's gonna help us see, it's a pretty dark image, you know, so we're just gonna see these highlights and glints on him, which look kind of nice. So we just kind of get his size right. And it's great having him in the scene because you can see he's actually reacting, like the, the room is reacting to him, which is, which is super cool. Um, I think it'll look really nice. All right, now let's just make sure he's actually standing behind the door. Yeah, cool. So it opens and there he is. Awesome. All right, the last step is to get our camera to actually rack focus to him because he's out of focus right now. And that's that's not cool. So uh, I wanna have my focus rack pretty much as the door starts to open. So I'll start it right in here, 331. And I'm gonna to go to focus distance and make sure I've got the right camera set. Yeah, no one. And I'm gonna hit a uh, keyframe right there for focus distance. And then I'm gonna to go to maybe 340, something like that, 341. And I think I'm just gonna move it out. Five looks pretty good. All right, I'll just set it to something like seven, I think works well. And I'll hit I for new keyframe. So now what's happening is our camera is in focused here and then it racks focus to him so that when it's open, he's in focus. Brilliant. All right, great. So that's how we can add in a flat image plane object into our scene and uh, how we can get uh, those shape keys to animate. Now, one note to talk about shape keys real quick. We are gonna have to do another step to get them into Unreal. I won't cover that here. We'll wait till we actually get to the Unreal tutorials, but just to flag that with you, we can actually bring this stuff in as it is now, there's a sort of intermediary step that we've got to do, but we'll get to that, so. Now that we've finished our scene, uh, we've got our render settings here. This is the number of samples. This is kind of, the higher this number is, the more resolved your image is. 30 is pretty good. Like, I, I don't really find I need to go much beyond that. So, ambient occlusion you can turn on that creates a little bit of darkening on the edges. I've got it off, I don't really feel like I needed it for the scene. Uh, bloom, we talked a bit about bloom and how we can change these values to adjust like the intensity and the amount of bloom in the scene. Um, depth of field, I just leave that value set. Um, subsurface scattering, we're not using any in our scene. S screen space reflections, I would turn this on and this is just gonna be great because this really gives you all that really nice reflection in your scene. Uh, motion blur, you're, you're welcome to give that a go. You can turn that on if you want. I really didn't feel like we needed it for this, um, but you know, to give it that real cinematic look, it's probably a good idea. So I may actually turn it on and just see what a render looks like with it. Volumetrics, we're not using any volumetrics in our scene, hair. Shadows, we talked about increasing these up. So making sure you've got soft shadows, high bit depth and right up to 4K. Um, now we haven't used indirect lighting in this scene um, and we haven't used any cube maps. So cube maps are for you know really capturing reflection data and also indirect lighting is for that global illumination effect. But our scene is so dark um, and we're actually getting a lot of really nice lighting just from what we've got going on in the scene. I haven't really felt 
that this was necessary. If you wanted to add this in, all you've got to do is create a iridescence uh, volume right here, this thing. So you just create one of these and just scale it up so that it contains your entire scene. Um, and you might want to increase the resolution a little bit on it, which you can do just from this tab here. Uh, so the resolution right now is four by four by four, uh, but you could like pump that up maybe to 10 by 10 by 10 because we've got such a large space. Um, and what this is going to do then is it's just going to calculate when you click bake indirect lighting, it's going to actually bake it for all of these points and it'll sit there and calculate what's the indirect lighting and how's it work. So, um, Again, I really felt like we needed it for this project, uh, but you're welcome to, to have a go with seeing what that looks like for you and, and what you think of, of you know, the overall look of what that does. So anyways, um, then what else we got? We've got, um, so film, uh, we could use transparent if we wanted our background to be transparent, but you know we don't have any kind of background. So that's not an issue for us. And simplify, just make sure you turn this off when you start uh, your render, you wanna make sure you're not simplifying your scene. Now, color management, this is something that we're gonna get into with the Unreal stuff. This is basically how to, how is it gonna be interpreting the look of the scene? And I've got mine set to sRGB as the display device. My view transform is set to filmic, and I've got no look on mine. I've got an exposure of one and a gamma of one. Um, you could pop this up a bit, you know, if you feel like your scene's a little on the dark side, uh, and on the dark side. You see, that, that was great. That was really funny. And I didn't even think about it. Yeah, and then um, yeah, then you just want to double check your settings with your cameras just to make sure that your depth of field looks good. So again, the nice thing about Easy is you're seeing you're seeing it all in frame. You know, like you're actually getting that that live update as you look at stuff. So um, you're able to really make sure you've got stuff uh, that's working well for for what you're after. So like I might turn down my depth of field a bit on this wide shot. That's uh, that's the long and short of it. Now we just set our output settings here. I'm gonna take my output directory and I'm just gonna do two forward slashes to uh, save it into my main directory here that I'm saved in. And I'll just give this a name. I'll call this um, hollow, I'll call it um, bounty hunter underscore, and then this will add in the uh, each frame number after that. So what this is gonna do is render it as an image sequence. We've got it set to PNG, so we're gonna get a bunch of different uh, image sequence files, and then we can bring that into something like After Effects or Blender itself, and we can do some compositing to it and then export a final. Or you can actually just, you know, straight up export it as a video format. We've got a couple options here um, that you can use. So, uh, but I always use PNG and then use a compositor to, to get the final output, so. Uh, yeah, that's that's the, the gist of it. You can bump this up to 16 to get more color depth out of your render as well, which looks really good. So now we can uh, hit render. So I've got everything set correctly now. I've got my um, everything turned on right. Just double check it all. It's set to 24 frames a second. I've got all that stuff done. Yeah, perfect. And what's great about EV, of course, is that it's a real time renderer. So it's going to render in real time a whole lot quicker than if you're waiting on cycles. So I'm just going to go up here to render and click on render animation. All right, so uh, now that we've rendered out our animation, um, I just thought I'd show you how to quickly composite a PNG sequence. And so I often talk about exporting as a PNG sequence, but never actually show you know, how to do that, how to put it together. So I'll just do that in Blender as opposed to After Effects, um, just so you can have, have a go at it just for yourself. So what you wanna do is come over here to your, um, we wanna switch over to the compositor, okay? I'm gonna click on Use Nodes, and this automatically sets us up with our render layers uh, and our composite, which again, remember this is the, the save output dialog that's over here is what this, this little thing is, okay? So what we wanna do is we need to bring in the image sequence that we've just done. So if you hit Shift A, you can go to input and we can actually go to uh, image. And then if we open up our image sequence, so just go and find the first um, file. So the first image in your file. And then what I can do is I'll just pull this out. I can, instead of single image, I can tell it that it's an image sequence, okay? Now I need to tell it how many frames. So uh, our start frame is one. So, and we've got a total number of 350 frames. Um, so make sure you don't get tripped up. If you're starting on frame zero, then you actually have 351 frames. So just be careful about that. We're starting at one, so it won't be a problem for us. But um, anyway, so what we can do is go frames 350. Now it knows to pull in all 350 frames that we've got, okay? Now, um, what we can do is set like the color space and stuff, which this is correct, it was sRGB. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now what you can do is you can uh, take this and you can plug it straight into image. Okay, so once we've set that, then we can just come over here uh, to our composite node. And remember that always corresponds with the output 
details that you have here. Okay, so now the first thing you want to do is actually you want to delete your render layers because if you have a render layer still in your your compositor, it's going to actually render the frame again, but then not do anything with it, and then it'll go through and process this, which will just take just as long as it would take to normally render, which defeats the whole purpose. So get rid of that. So now it's just straight up your footage and this output. It's no longer referencing the scene at all. Um, then instead of having another image sequence, because that would be really funny uh, if you did that, you want to switch this to um, FF MPEG video. And now um, what you can do is you can set, you know, the different, there's two different things with video. If you don't know about it, it's you've got your container and you've got your codec. So the container is like, what's what kind of file type is it going to be? So you could be like a QuickTime. So a .mov file is what that's going to be. And then you have the different codecs you could use. So H.264 is like for online, it's like a, a compression that uh, like YouTube uses when you upload stuff. Um, it, or it's you know, it's really compressed, um, but still looks good if you've got a high enough quality. Um, you can change those qualities here. You can go, you know, lossless, all that stuff. Um, and then another good one would be uh, this one, the QT, so QuickTime animation. Um, lots, of, lots of options in here. Uh, some of these might be a bit buggy for you, like DNxHD crashes for me right now at the moment uh, with the current settings. I'm not sure exactly why. I use DNxHD a lot for my professional work, but not out of Blender, just when I'm going out of After Effects and stuff. So it's a good, reliable codec. But you could like go H.264 and six this up to like you know high quality um, and are perceptibly lossless. That's a great title. Anyways, and then all you gotta do is go up here to render and render animation. And what it's gonna do is just start rendering through frame by frame. It's taking each PNG bring it in and it's exporting out this video sequence. And when this is done, you're gonna have a video file that's a .quicktime or a .mov that's encoded in H.264 that you can then play back. So you can also add in other things here to your composite. You know, you've got a lot of different effects um, and things to play with. Like you can change your color balance. Um, you know, you can do a lot of the things that you would be able to do in After Effects. You can do them in here too. So um, it's pretty, pretty cool. Anyways, um, that's how you would render out uh, PNG sequence. Now, why would you do a PNG sequence in the first place? Why don't you just like do video or off the front? The only reason that you would do a PNG sequence or in a, any kind of still image sequence is that if what if Blender crashes halfway through and the render's taken four hours, you know, um, you've made four hours of progress on that render. If it was encoding all to a single video file, you would have lost that four hours. To render again, you'd have to start over because uh, the video is just going to be corrupted. It's not going to work. It's going to have a bad frame. So it's safest to render out as image sequences when you're doing 3D work, because then if you have any problems or if it crashes, you can just start where you left off and then you can bring it all together in the end. It's also great for fixing little problems. You might have a few frames where a light flickers. If you know you had like three frames out of a 4,000 frame animation that you needed to fix, it'd be really annoying to have to re-render the whole thing just to fix those three frames. So that's the reason why you wanna do image sequence and then bring it in and do your composite and export this way. It's a safety safety step, good habit to be in. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. All right, so that's really all we've got time for today. I hope that uh, you've really enjoyed this uh, episode and we're pretty much done now with our EV scene. We've got everything in place. We've rendered out our video and uh, we've got our, um, our camera animation working and the doors opening. It's all looking really great. So I hope you're really happy with the scene, happy what you've learned and you can really begin to understand the power of EV and what can be done. There's a lot more to cover here. EV's got a lot more features than what we've touched on. Like we haven't even messed with iridescence cache volumes. We've talked about it, but like there's so much that you could do. But even with what we've covered, you can see you can get a fantastic, really cinematic result using this really amazing real-time renderer. So hope you've enjoyed everything up to this point. Now from here on out, we're gonna be really jumping into Unreal um, and uh, covering just a you know what it's going to take for us to now get everything set up in Unreal to make this VR scene work. So uh, I hope you stay tuned for those episodes as well. Um, but uh, if you're just interested in the Blender stuff and you're not interested in Unreal or VR, then this is where we say goodbye. And I will catch you in the next series, which will hopefully drop soon. And uh, yeah, really look forward to sharing that with you too. So once again, please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to find out when we have more episodes coming out. Ring the little bell so you get notifications. Try and premiere every episode so it's worth trying to be there uh just so we could say hi in chat it's a lot of fun and uh, yeah thanks again for watching you're amazing really appreciate you and i'll see you in the next tutorial have a great week bye oh.